This morning on GMSA at 9, an active silver alert. You may see if you are on the roads this morning. The search is on for this man last seen in the Kingsville area. Everything police know about his disappearance just ahead. Plus thousands of people in the dark after attacks on power substations on the West Coast. We'll look at what happened in the 9 and 9. And Russia says it's ready for some talks that could end the war in Ukraine. Could it happen or is it just wishful thinking? We'll check it out in your morning headlines coming up. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning. It's still chilly here in South Texas, but it is Monday. It is December 26th, and we can deal with it because of last week we like got froze out. So. And, and hey, we're almost at the end of it. Almost. Sarah Spivey says things are going to be warming up later throughout the week, and we have a lot to get to. But first, let's get you caught up to speed on that silver alert happening in Texas. A man vanished in the Kingsville area. That's just southwest of Corpus Christi. Right now, police are looking for 90 year old Ralph Sparks, who disappeared on Friday. He's about five foot six, has blue eyes, and police say he may have some scratches on his hand. He was last seen in a blue 2024 fusion with the Texas license plate on your screen right now. NLT 3578. Anything that can help police find this man. You're asked to call the Kingsville police their phone number right now at the bottom of your screen 361-592-4311. Outside with live cam, you know, I keep forgetting the kids are off all week, so this is going to be a great week for them to get out and enjoy some of those Christmas gifts. Today's going to be beautiful. Absolutely. And you know what? Temperatures are already above freezing in San Antonio right now, and we're just getting started with the gradual warm-up trend. I want to get you up to speed, though, on the aquifer. The aquifer is up more than half a foot over the past 24 hours. And in the pollen count today, looks pretty good. Molds and mountain cedar are both present, but they're both low, so that is more good news there. All right, take a look at temperatures around South Central Texas. You can see that many of us are starting to get above freezing. It's now 40 in New Braunfels, 35 in Hondo, 36 in Pleasanton, still below freezing in Kerrville, but barely so 36 in Del Rio. Today's going to be one of those days where the sun is going to feel great. By noon, we'll be in the mid 50s and in the afternoon, 62 for the high temperature. West Northwest winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. You know, these days after after Christmas, a lot of people hitting the roads. Perhaps you are or you have loved ones who are hitting the roads around Texas. I'll be back with a look at your Texas traveling forecast and we'll talk about just how warm it'll get later on this week. Coming up in a bit, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Let's take a look outside with Trans Guy. Just like Sarah was saying, you know, a lot of people either heading back home or traveling the day after Christmas. But so far, David, we've had a very easy morning on the roads. We haven't seen any major crashes or incidents pop up. But if anything does, we will let you know about it. Still not a lot of traffic, but you better get your sunglasses going out to see those long shadows. Oh, Thanks, here's today's Dad. 99. This holiday season is becoming a nightmare for millions still dealing with a deadly winter storm. Flight cancellations and delays have many wondering how they're getting home. Dozens of families are also planning funerals after winter storms left at least 39 people dead. Thousands of passengers were left stranded in airport Sunday with over 2,800 flights canceled. Three power substations in Washington state broken into Sunday, putting 14,000 people in the dark on Christmas day. The attacks come after at least five power substations were reportedly attacked in Washington, Oregon last month. Two more were targeted in North Carolina earlier this month, leaving entire towns without power for days. The suspect of Friday's deadly shooting in Paris is back in police custody. The 69-year-old was originally sent to police psychiatric facility after opening fire at a Kurdish community center in central Paris. Three people were killed and three others were injured. The suspect will be brought in front of a judge today. Taiwan's defense ministry says China is ramping up its military drills around the island nation. Taiwan says it's the largest Chinese military incursion since U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi visited in August this year. Taiwan's military has responded by deploying combat air patrols, Navy vessels and land-based missile systems. Over in Ukraine, moments of holiday peace despite the war with Russia. In Kyiv, Russian attacks didn't stop the lighting of the capital Christmas tree. The largest religion of Ukraine and Russia is Orthodox Christianity. So Christmas is celebrated on January 7th with a public holiday yesterday. As expected, Russia isn't backing down for the holidays. Its military struck different parts of Ukraine over the weekend. 
Meanwhile, the Taliban is warning U.S. officials about interfering in what they're calling internal issues. The message comes from a Taliban spokesperson saying no one will be allowed to speak out under the title of humanitarian aid in Afghanistan. The Taliban has also ordered all local and international non-government organizations to stop female employees from going to work. Two busloads of migrants were dropped off near Vice President Kamala Harris's residence in Washington, D.C. this past weekend. No one was there to greet the asylum seekers as they arrived from Texas. A White House official says migrants were taken to local shelters. Governor Greg Abbott says the move is a way of helping migrants find a place to stay since small Texas towns are overwhelmed with the amount of people coming across the southern border. Residents in Jackson, Mississippi spent their Christmas under another boil water alert Sunday because of low water pressure across the city. Authorities say cold weather likely caused several water mains to snap. Those breaks in the system lower the water pressure. Right now, crews are working to find and repair the breaks. The city's still encouraging people to boil their water, even if pressure returns. A mega lottery prize could send 2022 out with a bang. The Mega Millions jackpot has jumped to $565 million after no winner in Friday night's drawing. The jackpot has grown since the last grand prize on October 14th. The next drawing is set for Tuesday, December 27th. And that's today's 9 at 9. In your morning headlines, tensions escalating this morning between North and South Korea. And big news out of West Point. Our Max Massey joins us live in studio with your morning headlines. Max, where are we starting this morning? Good morning, guys. We're starting with two huge updates out of the war with Ukraine. So President Vladimir Putin now claiming that Russia is ready for talks to end the war in Ukraine. But it looks like attacks, they're not stopping anytime soon. So Putin saying in a state television interview, Experts of which were released yesterday afternoon that Russia is, quote unquote, prepared to negotiate some acceptable outcomes of all the participants of this process. Now, he said it's not us who refuse talks, it's them. Something the Kremlin has repeatedly stated in recent months as this 10 month old invasion keeps losing momentum. Also big news out of the war this morning, Russia's Deputy Prime Minister Alexander Novak saying that Russia is prepared to resume gas supplies to Europe. Remember, that was stopped for political reasons. And guys, what you alluded to, it looks like military escalation between North and South Korea continues. South Korea's military firing warning shots, scrambling fighter jets and flying surveillance drones across the border into North Korea. So all of this comes after North Korean drones. They actually violated airspace for the first time in five years. This obviously fresh escalation of these two countries tensions. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff saying South Korea's military, they detected five drones from North Korea crossing the border, one traveling as far as the northern part of South Korean capital, and the military had to respond. They fired warning shots, they launched fighter jets, and they even launched attack helicopters shooting down the North Korean drones. Right now, still waiting on more information, but no immediate reports of any civilian damage in South Korea. All right, we're going to take you back to a couple years ago. Do you remember the Cambridge Analytica situation? Well, now Facebook's corporate parent, Meta, name change, they've agreed to pay $725 million, all to settle a lawsuit, which alleged the world's largest social media platform, Facebook at the time, allowed millions of the user's personal information, likely yours and mine, to be fed to Cambridge Analytica. So the case came from 2018, those revelations that the company paid a Facebook app developer for access to personal information of about 87 million users of Facebook. That data was then used to target certain voters during the, during the 2016 presidential election. Now that settlement was revealed in court documents. And $725 million, though, it still needs to be approved by a judge in San Francisco federal court, and that hearing is set for March. And no, David, I don't think we get any of that money. Yeah, yeah, yeah sorry. Do I yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> we'll file a complaint to Meta. I got you. Thank you. Okay. All right, now to some of those changes at West Point. So the U.S. Military Academy, they're going to begin removing Confederate monuments from its campus, and that includes a portrait of Robert E. Lee that shows him wearing a Confederate uniform. 
So the Academy will undergo a multi-phase process during the holiday break, removing all 13 identified references and installations that honors the Confederacy. The changes at West Point, remember, it was approved by the Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin back in October, and they're all part of the larger set of recommendations proposed by the Naming Commission, and that Naming Commission was mandated by Congress last year in the National Defense Authorization Act. West Point's memorialization, history, and museum committee, they're actually going to propose new names for streets, buildings, and even areas in West Point. All of those areas were actually named for those who served in the Confederacy. And guys, we've been talking about the cold. People across the country, they've been calling this recent snowfall in some major cities a once-in-a-generation storm, and there's been some unique outcomes. A car left abandoned in a snowbank in Minneapolis, and now, guys, this has become somewhat of a tourist attraction. The video is going viral, but so far, police aren't saying anything about who or what might have done this. So the question is, how do you think <laughs> the car got up on what appears to be about four feet of snow? And more importantly, if you were that vehicle's owner, how would you get it off? You just have to wait for it to melt, I guess. Tow truck. <laughs> Tow truck. <laughs> <laughs> and for those who uh, didn't join us this weekend on the Night Beat, Merry Christmas. We were tracking Santa with the help of NORAD. We know about the sleigh, but did you know about Santa's chopper? Yes, Santa has a chopper. That's how jolly old St. Nick decided to spread some holiday cheer at an elementary school near Salt Lake City. Hundreds of kids getting to see Santa making a special stop and this visit a special celebration. So he visited Western Hills Elementary. They were actually in the bottom 5% of the state in academic standing, but this year they got good grades. They received a B rating from the Utah State Board of Education and the improvement in grades. Well, it was worth celebrating with Santa. So the moral of the story, guys, you get good grades, you get a special visit from Santa and his chopper. Wow. That's pretty good. There you go. Looks like pretty that. cold over there too. Yeah, well, Santa's ready. Yeah. I gotta say, so Mia was tracking Santa. Uh huh. Took it weird routes. I'm Did not he? I'm not gonna lie. I went like Florida and then like Quebec and then Asia and then back to Texas. It was a weird thing. It's like UPS, they have a system, though they don't turn left. I don't know. I bet you Santa didn't turn left. I'm sorry. Save time. <laughs> Save gas money. Yeah, there you go. It's that Rudolph. <laughs> Rudolph knows what he's and all doing. And other reindeer. I, mean, I you know, guess. Quick, Just follow fast. the red nose. Have you ever seen him run across the street? I have not. <laughs> Down, imagine how fast they can fly. It's true. Dude, you're quick. Thank you, Max. Thanks, guys. It is now 9, 10, and 39 degrees. Here's case at Tiffany Huertas on what's next on GMSA at 9. A program at Colonial Hills Elementary School is offering resources and support to refugee students. A look at how it's changed the life of one fifth grader next. Welcome back. It is 14 minutes after 9 o'clock. A local elementary school helping refugee children newly arrived in the U.S. succeed by providing resources and support. Tiffany Huerta shows us how the students' passion for learning has grown into this program. I pledge allegiance to the flag. These fourth and fifth grade students in Colonial Hills Elementary School begin each day with the Pledge of Allegiance Honor the Texas flag. and the Texas Pledge. Many of them just learned them a few months ago, including 10-year-old Salma Gul. Salma and her family moved to the U.S. from Afghanistan last year. I like to study here. Salma's sister is in the class next door and also enjoys learning. English learning. The sisters are learning different subjects, making friends, and working on several projects. Cherky. Okay. Pumpkin. Salma and her classmates okay. are part of the newcomer program at Northeast ISD that provides support and resources for refugee students. What are these? Their teacher, Ms. Marta Salazar, says she's also learning from her students. I see also similarities from my culture. I'm Mexican, so I see some stuff that we have like in common and we can use it in class, so it's, it's pretty fun here. Carrie Helpert, assistant director of bilingual ESL newcomers, says the program has allowed students to express themselves. It's been a huge success because we see our kids being able to excel, feeling more and more confident, feeling safe in the school. Last year, they had about 40 students part of the newcomer program. This year, they have over 100. A majority of them 
from Afghanistan. We love having the students here. They bring such a great diversity to the campus. Being able to be in these classrooms, you see them happy, you see them excited, you see them expressing themselves more and more in the English language. Salma is excited to continue learning and through drawings, she expresses love for her new home. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Sarah, it's so nice to see 40 degrees it outside is. after how cold it's been the last couple of days. Isn't that funny? It's all about perspective, right? You know, for a long time we were wanting it to be cold, right? And then and where 40 was, oh my God, it's 40. It's I know, so cold. I know. And this morning we once again had a hard freeze around San Antonio, South Central Texas. But hey, sunny right now. We're already above freezing in San Antonio. But guess what? Christmas morning, yesterday morning, guys, we hit 22 degrees. Ooh. That makes it the second coldest Christmas morning on record in San Antonio. And records go back to 1885. So yeah, some real deal cold yesterday. A lot of people going to be traveling back home over the next coming days. Here's your Texas travel cast. Things look great across the state of Texas today. Temperatures are going to be in the 50s and 60s. Early tomorrow morning, we'll have another freeze, a light freeze though around San Antonio. And then once again, tomorrow, Tuesday is going to look great on the roads. No real issues out there. Temperatures in the 50s and 60s. And then Wednesday morning after a chilly start, we'll be in the 60s and 70s already across the state of Texas. So no weather woes across the state to worry about the next few days. And here in San Antonio, things are starting off nice and sunny. It's 39 degrees outside and, you know, the dew points are low, so it's still pretty dry out there. But with the dry air in place, the sunny skies, we're once again going to have another day where temperatures will quickly rise. It's already 35 in Hondo, 36 in Del Rio, 40 in New Braunfels, 36 in Pleasanton. Temperatures still below freezing in Kerrville uh, but, and Bandera, as well as Las Maples. But you can see that all of us are now above freezing around San Antonio with the exception of the hill country. 35 in Hondo, 36 in Seguin, 40 in the Stinson area. And as we look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, we'll already be in the 50s by the lunch hour and in the afternoon. West winds at about 5 miles per hour, warming up to 62 for the high temperature. The average this time of year is 63, so we'll be pretty close to average this afternoon. And then tonight, a chilly evening if you have Monday night plans, but not nearly as cold as it has been the the last few nights. Temperatures will be in the 40s as early as 8 p.m. So once again, it'll be 64 in Uvalde, 59 in Kerrville, 64 in Del Rio, 62 Canyon Lake, 60 in Pleasanton, and 59 in Gonzales. Let's take a look at the weather setup across a good portion of the nation. I want to mention that there is a pretty dynamic system that's bringing snowfall to parts of Kentucky uh, and uh, Tennessee. Those areas particularly hit hard by the winter storm over the weekend, but behind Behind this, we've got a cool front and it's bringing some very light rain uh, to parts of North Texas. This is very light rain falling there. We're not anticipating any rainfall from this system and this front is pretty weak. We're not going to see a temperature drop from this front, but instead what we'll be looking at is a change in the winds. By about 6, 7 p.m., you'll notice that those winds will be from the north. That'll bring in a slightly dry push of air and that dry push of air is going to allow us to cool down once again to below freezing early tomorrow morning. So we've got another freeze on deck for us Tuesday morning. It'll be near 30 degrees around San Antonio, but in the upper 20s across parts of the hill country. Now this kind of a freeze is a lighter freeze. You'll still want to keep those uh, plants covered and you'll want to make sure your pets have a warm place to stay, but I'm not worried about pipes at all in the overnight hours, so you won't have to drip the faucets or anything like that. As we look ahead to tomorrow, high temperature right near 6 after that morning freeze potential for a light freeze Wednesday morning, perhaps even some frost on the ground, but we don't anticipate a hard freeze and then a high temperature on Wednesday will be near 70 degrees. As we look at Thursday and Friday, a small chance for isolated rain. I'll be talking more about that coming up in the next half hour of GMSA at nine. But as for New Year's Eve weekend, looks pretty good. Mornings in the 50s, afternoons in the 70s. That's about 10 degrees above the average. So more on that chance for isolated rain coming up in the next half hour. And remember, popping fireworks. Oh, on New Year's Eve, it's going to be very, it's very dry outside. Even if we get a little rain on uh, Thursday, Friday, second driest year on record. So maybe just skip it this year. Yeah, yeah maybe. Well, let's see how that works. Yeah. <laughs> it's 920 and 40 degrees.
Coming up next, Habitat for Humanity has been hard at work building homes for families this year. We're going to check in on a family that got a Christmas wish over the weekend. This morning, Habitat for Humanity has wrapped up a pretty busy year. The nonprofit completed a total of 52 homes to give back to families across San Antonio. In case that's Jonathan Cotto was there as one family saw their Christmas wish come true. Thanks to Habitat for Humanity, this family gets to move into their brand new home just in time for the holidays. Well, um, we're very excited. <laughs> we're very happy. Yeah, I'm very happy for my family to get a new home. Estrella says having the keys to their very own home, it doesn't feel real. We're working very hard, almost more than 20 years, to get a new home. So it's uh, our dream completely, yeah, for my kids, for my husband. The Del Rio family never thought this day would come. They say the last two decades haven't been the easiest. We pay rent. It's hard. It's hard to pay rent because it's no, it's no, nothing is yours. You throw your money, um, but uh, we don't have uh, other choice. But this Christmas, things will look and feel a little different for the Del Rios. Security, more happy, more comfortable, um, more in family, more it's totally different. For Estrella, the heart of any home is the kitchen and says she plans on cooking all the traditional fixings this Christmas. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Still coming up, we invite you to go behind this lens and meet some of our KSAT photojournalists. KSAT airing a one-hour special on Thursday, December 29th. That's this Thursday. It'll happen at 9 o'clock. It's presented by our talented staff. They're going to tell you what stories they remember the most in 2022, and they'll take you behind the scenes on what goes into covering the stories that you see here on KSAT 12. A lot of hard work goes into all these packages and all these stories that you see during our newscast. And these are this is shows. these are going to be by our photographers yes. and this is this special is my favorite all year long because they really get to showcase their talent. Um, the editing that went into this special, mm -hmm. um, our photographers do phenomenal work. So shout out to them and can't wait to see this special. The best of the best. 925, 40 degrees. Still a lot more ahead on GMSA at nine, starting with a deadly winter storm that stranded thousands of people at airports across the country. We'll look at the holiday headache for air travelers and how people are handling it after Christmas. Plus, what a great weekend for sports. Cowboy fans celebrating. Max Massey is back. We're going to break it all down for you just in case you might have missed something. We also know there's a lot of people traveling on the roads today. Sarah Spivey says you shouldn't have any problems weather wise on the roads across Texas. Haven't seen that many people out and about yet. It's only 926. If any incidents pop up or crashes or backups, we'll let you know about them. This morning, the holiday season becoming a nightmare for millions still dealing with that deadly winter storm. So far this morning at San Antonio International Airport, 16 departure cancellations, three arrival cancellations. And as ABC's Justin Finch reports, those delays have many wondering how they are going to get to their final destinations. A tragic holiday weekend for dozens of families now planning funerals after winter storms nationwide left at least 39 people dead. There is substantial, significant and devastating loss of life as a result of this winter storm. Storm related incidents now blamed for at least 17 deaths in New York State, 10 from the city of Buffalo alone, and that toll is expected to rise. Authorities report multiple people found dead in or near their cars. We know there are people who've been stuck in cars for more than two days, and there are people in homes that are uh, below freezing now temperatures. The storm also dropping nearly four feet of snow with an extra two feet still possible in some areas. Buffalo's airport is closed until tomorrow, adding to the growing list of flight cancellations across the country. I don't have no choice, Okay, but I'm going to stay here until Monday. At the airport? At the airport. Thousands of passengers left stranded nationwide, some sleeping in airports. More than 2,800 flights canceled yesterday alone, and nearly 6,700 were delayed. And from coast to coast, treacherous road conditions. In Rockton, Illinois, several injured in this eight-vehicle crash. 
And in Ohio, a deadly multi-car pileup involving roughly 50 cars. This is a stark reminder of what can happen when you get behind the wheel and try to drive in bad weather conditions. And power outages left hundreds of thousands in the dark over the weekend. And Con Edison, the power supplier to New York City, thanked customers Sunday for reducing their energy consumption, saying the system has now stabilized. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. The good news here is that we don't have, it's cold, Sarah, but we don't right. have those travel delays in the state of Texas. Now, if you're flying out, you're it's like a different it's, story. Yeah, exactly. but across the roadways around Texas, no problems as far as the weather is concerned. But of course, check with your airlines if you're heading out. All right, the aquifer itself is actually up half a foot, more than half a foot over the past 24 hours. And in the pollen count today, we've only got two allergens out there, molds and mountain cedar, and they're both low. So that's some good news there. All right, I want to go ahead and talk about a few weather headlines, things we're going to be talking about. Today, it'll be sunny and it'll actually be getting into the 60s, the warmest we've been since Thursday when that Arctic front moved through. Tomorrow, I don't think we're done with the freezes yet. Another freeze is possible tomorrow, just not a hard freeze, which is good news, and it will be sunny. And then by Thursday this week, this cold air will be a thing of the past. Otherwise, you might just be seeing your plants dead from the cold, but by Thursday, we'll be in the 70s, and even some isolated rain is possible. As we take a look at temperatures out there right now, we're all near 40 or in the low 40s. The exception of that is the Hill Country, Lost Maples, Bandera, Kerrville, near freezing still at the moment. 39 in Castroville, 40 in Converse, 36 in Seguin, and 44 in New Braunfels. Today, we'll be looking at high temperature right near 62 degrees this afternoon. A gorgeous day after this cold start with winds from the west-northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. While the weather may be fine here across Texas, it's a different story across parts of the nation. I've got to look ahead to some potential travel spots. And, of course, we'll talk about that chance for isolated rain later on this week. Sarah. Take a look outside of the roads of Transkite like we were talking about. If you're traveling, heading back home, or maybe you're doing a late visit to, to, to visit family now, uh, you know, the roads, we've had a very easy morning out on the roads. We haven't had seen any crashes or major incidents. And of course, weather wise is playing nice. If anything pops up, we'll let you know about that. And this morning, it was a very busy weekend of sports, and we're not done yet. David and Max Massey are breaking it all down, plus a preview of this week's Alamo Bowl. Guys, I want to say that Cowboys game was like, <laughs> I'm first of all, I'm sorry, Boy, Max. Hold your horses, I'm because sorry. <laughs> because we're gonna have to pull out the uh, what is it, the soapbox for David. Soapbox. Yeah, we got ah. some we got some issues, but before we even get to that, obviously we got to talk about the Valero Alamo Bowl. It's right. countdown now. And uh, Thursday, right? Yeah. Okay. Thursday night. It's Texas. The problem with this game is there's going to be some uh, big time Texas players that are not going to be playing in right. the Valero Alamo Bowl. That's a whole other subject. And we're, we can get off on that tangent if you All right, like. let's do it. Let's do it. Do you, are you okay that. with players not no. playing? The, you want nope. them to play no nope. matter what? Nope. Are you risking the draft status? You signed a contract. What contract? They gave you a scholarship. Okay, well, the, technically, you, if they're no longer enrolled in the school, they don't you, need that scholarship anymore. Well, then pay it back. I think with the NIL, they probably could, especially Bijan. No, no, Not no, no. You shade. signed a contract uh -huh. to play for the University of Texas for however many years you signed that contract for. I don't know if they and give you years. Now you've, you've just decided that you're no longer going to fulfill your obligation mm -hmm. to the University of Texas. Tech, you got what you wanted out of it. You got a chance to go turn pro. And so it's like, hey, see y'all later. Too bad about you. I'm gone. So if you were a player, right? Say you're Bijan. Uh -huh. right? Say you could be picked up to number five. I'd be about to make millions of dollars. Well, he made millions. Remember, he yeah. had one of the highest yeah. paying NIL deals anyway, in the country. I, could, just, I have a hard time believing. I, I don't like, oh, I'm afraid of getting hurt. Okay, well, you can walk across the street getting hurt. <laughs> you, you, uh, you signed a contract, okay. you got a scholarship, and you committed to the University of Texas and mm -hmm. all these other kids. All these other kids. I'm not just picking on Bijan. I've said oh, this no, for I years. <laughs> I'm picking on every, every player who says, oh, Yo, he I'm, might be I'm watching. too good I'm to go saying. to the ball. Yeah, I mean, it, well, he's not here, is he? He could be here. He could, he could be, be here supporting well, his Bichon, team. Well, Bijan, I think you got to play. I think you committed to the University of Texas. Okay. And I think, and I'm, I'm not picking on him. I'm picking on every player that bows out, thinking now I'm going to go make all this money in the pros. Mm -hmm. So they just used their university. That's all they did. Right. They just used him. So it's no longer college football, and that's a whole nother 
road we can go down, but not today. I think we just went down it. So either way, yeah, well, the no, we haven't gone down that road. <laughs> it's coming up Thursday. So speaking of Longhorns, okay, and without Bijan, without Bijan, they held and, their first workout um, here in San Antonio. They got a couple other guys not playing. They got a, they got a few. I mean. Yeah. So take a look. They were at Trinity University, Longhorns, yeah. taking the field, preparing for the Huskies in the Dome. You asked my opinion. I oh, no, I love it. This is, this is an open forum. We're here for your opinion, David. Huh? We're here for it. Oh, well. Okay, so anyway, they're, they're what are they, ranked 20th in the country, mm -hmm. and Washington's ranked number, number 12. And a couple of these guys have been here before, which is, which is kind of sweet because they, uh, they know the lay of the land out there in the Alamo Dome. So, yeah. so that'll be fun. So good for them. And the last time some of these guys good played. Good for the guys that are sticking around actually playing, putting on the pads and going out there. and oh. Dominating Colorado. <laughs> Remember the last time we saw them here, they won like 55-28. Yeah, was, that, was that was a good game. So. And Washington's been here, I think, what, twice? Yeah. Or two times before? Okay. So that one will be at uh, Thursday night right there in the Alamo Dome. 8 o'clock kickoff. So get your tickets. All right, let's move on. Having the ability, you know, to get an opportunity on a stage like this, I think that's huge. Um, you know, I was able to play, you know, in Alabama myself, uh, my freshman year. So I think um, when you get a chance to step up like these guys have and, you know, they've been putting in their work, um, you know, I'm just really excited to see what they can do out there. See, he's been here before. He's been here before. I think he's Jordan been, Whittington, been right? He was here before. Yeah. He, uh, he led Cuero to the state title, and he's coming back playing in front of his hometown. There you go. So preparation's obviously underway, and then 8.30, <laughs> Thursday night. I'm excited. Are you going to be there? No. Okay. I'll watch it at <laughs> home. Old football coverage. That's oh, something we all watch at home. If B. John's not going to be there, I'm not going to be there. That's a good deal. Why should I go? Okay. If he's not going to show up for his team, why should I show up? Is you know, David Sears upset? You know who did show know. up, though? <laughs> Dak Prescott, or did he? Uh, Finally, I had to pull, I had to pull this one out. Everyone, whether it's uh, whether it's LeBron at 38 or whatever, or Dak throwing any sort of pass, the announcers love them. David Sears has a, an the alternate announcers opinion. Love, love Dak, Dak Prescott. I mean, he threw for let's see, he threw for 347 yards. Mm -hmm. He threw three touchdowns and a interception. <laughs> And the interception was absolutely <laughs> embarrassing. It was like, it was. It was like, what do you do? Right to Josh Sweat for a, for a touchdown yeah, it was a to the wrong six. team. Yeah, and it got him. And they beat the Eagles. They did. Forty to thirty-four. Yeah. The Eagles didn't have their best player on the field. Did not have the MVP. And they struggled MVP. against the Eagles. I want to give a shout out to Gardner Minshew though. So, who? Gardner Minshew, yeah, the quarterback. You, how about T.Y. He, Hilton? Did you see that catch right there? That yeah, was it was beautiful. Interference that did not get called, but he caught the ball anyway. Yeah. Well, he he kind of had the Jalen Waddle. Yeah, that was good stuff. Yeah, and right. that was that's, see that's what that's what gets all these people talking about how great Dash Prescott is because he'll do something really bad and then he'll come out and do a whole lot of really good and the Cowboys will win. But can Dak Prescott lead the Cowboys to playoff victories? Not one, okay, but two or three. Get him in the Super Bowl. Can he do that no. by throwing picks like that, like he did the other day? Because at some point, that's going to come back and bite him really bad. All right, let's hear from that some of the players. All right. Yeah, I mean, that's a guy that's made a lot of big-time catches in his career, um, had a long career, and uh, has been very, very successful. Uh, and, I mean, fourth down, I went to him, and, and, he, and he drew the holding call earlier in the game. And right there, third and 30, uh, yeah, he got, got even with him as I was releasing it. I uh, knew to put some air under, and he'd go – uh, knew, I knew he'd go make a play, uh, and it would be uh, either that or, or that or incompletion. And he obviously went and, and made a catch. So uh, third and thirty, uh, find Ty. I was like, man, if that give me, it, and then the ball just took off, and I'm like, well, here we go. And I just, that's what I do, man. I just make plays. I mean, that's what I'm here for. Continue to make plays. Continue to guide those guys and help them as much as I can. And you know, when I get out there, um, just show that I'm, you know, I'm still here. So, or T.Y. already making his money yeah. worth it. And uh, so now the Cowboys play the Jaguar. No, I'm sorry, the Titans on Thursday. Yeah, lost and did you see what happened to the Titans yesterday? Or how about, uh, let's reverse that. Did you see what the Texans did to the Titans yesterday? People are sleeping on Ooh. the Texans. I got to say. So let's see if we can pull up the Texans video because they've gone to OT against some real teams. Wow. Nothing against, I, we're just replaying. Yeah, well, we like that catch. Well, you <laughs> like that catch. That's, well, because it's past interference. That's how come we're showing it. it but okay. anyway, the Texans beat the Titans yesterday. They did? And the Texans have, have the ones they lost late. Lately, pretty Sneaky. tight games. In OT, yeah. to yeah. the Chiefs, I think the last game they yeah. lost was in OT, and the Chiefs with the presumptive MVP, Pat Mahomes. But here we go. I mean, Davis Mills, if you're the Texans and you get the number one pick, do you, uh, do you draft quarterback? 
I don't know. They're talking about going after a um, kid from Alabama. Oh, yeah, Bryce Young. Bryce so there Young, we go. But, so. no, absolute stunner. And uh, Malik Willis was in for the Titans. They tried to throw the Hail Mary. They lost. Yeah. Texans outscored them 9-0 in the fourth quarter and go on to win. Second win of the season, 19-14. to They could actually have four wins in the division and, be, and have as many wins as anybody else in their division. Think about that. Um, yeah, the draft is going to be very interesting for them. Be very interesting. Should you get a should you get a quarterback or should you get a running back? Yeah, that's true. Oh, Bijan, your guy could go there. Let's uh let's hear from uh, some of the players. Do anything coaches. else? Uh, we're two one and one. I think we're two one and one in the division, and we want to end up with the best record in our division. We finish up with two more division opponents, so those games are huge for us. The record is what it is at this point, but we're coming in fighting for everything we can do, um, week in and week out, to try to go out there and scratch our way to get some wins. Um, we've been close the past couple of weeks, got it today, and I mean, really excited for um, these next two games to close out the season. So why not have a smile on? What are you doing? Yeah, he looks so upset. He's upset. He's a, he um, won. <laughs> yeah, they play the Jaguars. <laughs> they play the Jaguars next. And that's on. Uh, Trevor Lawrence and the Jaguars have been hot, too. Yeah, so they've looked they good. Yeah, they just so. took down the Cowboys. Huh? And real quick, the San Antonio Spurs back in action. Did you watch the game, Orlando? You were up late yeah. the other night. Did you watch that? Oh, yeah. yeah. You know who looks good on the Orlando? Bull Bull. Yeah. Did you see that? They uh, Spurs are right there, and all of a sudden Orlando makes like three or four threes in a row. It's it like, boom, seems done. like that's kind of been the Spurs' M.O. this season is the fourth quarter. That's uh, been their M.O. for a couple years now. <laughs> so, so here's they were right in it. Well, <laughs> taking so, the Jazz tonight, yeah. OKC tomorrow, and then the Knicks on Thursday. Knicks just lost to the Sixers. These are all winnable games in theory. How do you know they lost to this? Why, you, man, you keep up with all the Philadelphia stuff, don't you? I, yesterday um, was a day of sports. Yeah, and so that's three games this week before the weekend. Yep. So that's three games in four nights. That's, we got a young team. Yeah. Well, if they can't do it, no one can. <laughs> there you go. Max, were you upset about your Eagles losing to our Cowboys? No, because all you need to do is win one. People are going to shoot me like hate mail. All you need, <laughs> if you're the Eagles, so you just need up. to win one of the next two games. You're playing the Saints. Also, a little underlying storyline here. Mm -hmm. The Eagles have the Saints pick. So the worse that the Saints do, the better the Eagles are. So if the bye week and getting healthy in the playoffs isn't motivation enough, a better First round pick. Okay. I'd help him out. And once again, I'm not picking on B. John Robinson. What about Dak? Are you picking on Dak? Always not. picking on Dak. Uh, I'll pick on Dak. When Dak wins the Super Bowl, then, you know, we're all good. Okay. Super Bowl or bust. Super Bowl or bust. Well, that's what the Cowboys always say, isn't it? Right? It's, it's not really a great season if you don't get to the championship and win it. Well, another, maybe it won't be a good season loss. then. I don't know. Uh, Sarah Costa <laughs> just robbing Just being it. honest here. I've lost faith. But go Cowboys. All right. Wow. Go Bijan. All right. 944, go 43 degrees. Thank you, gentlemen. You're watching GMAs at 9. We'll be right back after this. Butimus. Butimus? Is that the word oh, you're using this to describe? This word. This butimus. word that David Sears has I come like up with. it. I yeah. like it. Yeah, it's going to be a butimus day, all right? Yeah. Hey, so we didn't get any snow. We didn't get any ice. Except for at this one person's uh, backyard. <laughs> this is a look at Spring Branch. She says, or they say, homemade snow machine plus freezing temperatures makes for a semi-white Christmas. I like hey. that. Is that it's so? Awesome. That's ice. You know what that probably is? Is a septic system. If it's spring break. Oh my goodness! A lot of people out there have septic systems, and so the sprinklers go off. Homemade. She said it was a homemade snow machine. Yeah. So I think she probably made some. Or maybe some, maybe some. But a lot of people have the have the septic system, so the sprinklers oh, go yeah. off. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. Septic. And next thing you know, you got your little ice pond. Whew. Maybe not. Maybe that wouldn't be an intentional, but it looked like that yeah. one was intentional. So thank you for sending in that picture to our KSAC Connect feature uh, on our weather app. As we take a look across the nation, we've got one big weather maker that's currently pushing east, bringing snowfall across the Appalachian Mountains, even parts of Mississippi and uh, parts of uh, Arkansas this morning. Dallas dealing with some light rain at the moment, but no frozen precipitation. Uh, the areas that could be impacted by that system today are across the Midwest, the Great Lakes. That's where we could have some winter travel impacts today. Uh, tomorrow, though, it's all going to be focused along the Pacific Northwest and parts of the Rockies. Same story for Wednesday as well. Across the state of Texas, though, we do not anticipate any travel issues because of weather. Traffic is another reason, of course, but the weather should be totally fine across the state of Texas. Right now, across the city of San Antonio, we're getting to near 40 degrees uh, across some of the official uh, temperature sites 
ice around the city. Elsewhere, though, it's 37 in Kerrville, now above freezing in Kerrville, 42 in Uvalde, 42 in Gonzales, 42 in Pleasanton, and 41 in Eagle Pass. Today's going to be the warmest day we've had since that Arctic front moved through on Thursday of last week, and it's still going to be cool and pretty pleasant out there. By noon, we'll be in the mid 50s, mostly sunny, 62 for the afternoon high temperature. And tonight is going to get chilly after the sun sets, but not as cold as the last few nights. We'll be in the upper 40s by 8 p.m. Elsewhere, high temperatures in your neighborhood in Gavaldi, it's going to be 64, 60 in Creases Springs, 59 in Rock Springs, 64 in Del Rio, 60 in Beeville, 62 in Canyon Lake. The average temperature this time around for San Antonio is 63. And so we're going to be right near average. Average. It's nice to have an average day after that cold snap, isn't it? 64 in Castroville, 62 at Stinson, 60 in Nixon, Smiley, and 62 in Seguin. It's very dry still outside. We're still dealing with very dry air. Dew points in the teens. At least, though, we're seeing dew points above zero. Dew points were in the negatives the last couple of days. And over the next few days, the dew points are really going to be the subtle changing factor in our weather. So by tomorrow, dew points are going to be in the 30s. That's still really dry. But Wednesday and Thursday, the humidity is going to be a little higher, not necessarily muggy outside, but with the dew points a little higher, temperatures are not going to be able to cool down as much. So even though, yes, we're going to have a freeze tomorrow morning and be close to freezing on Wednesday morning, by Thursday, uh, our morning lows will be in the 50s. And we are really only anticipating a little bit of rain with that on Thursday and Friday. Some isolated showers are possible, perhaps even an isolated rumble of thunder, but it's by Thursday that our highs will be back into the 70s and over the weekend, New Year's Eve weekend, it's going to be pretty nice. Mornings in the 50s, afternoons in the 70s. Really nice as people ring in the new year, although I do have to caution you, it's pretty dry out there, so any firework displays that need to be um, monitored very carefully. Please, please be safe. Yep. Thank you, Sarah. 951, 43 degrees. Up next, Mariah Carey is the undisputed queen of Christmas, and she's making history to prove that. We've got that plus your Hollywood headlines after this. A teacher at Somerset High School is hoping drone racing becomes part of UIL competition. Tomorrow on GMSA at 9, how it's already impacting students. In your morning spotlight, another Christmas has passed, but not before Mariah Carey retained her title as the queen of Christmas music. The singer's 1994 hit All I Want for Christmas is You topped the Billboard Hot 100 chart for the fourth Christmas in a row. The track's popularity on streaming platforms has created the resurgence. It's now the first song to have four separate holiday runs at number one. And get ready for some more Chris Rock. The comedian will take the stage for an event called Selective Outrage. It'll be the first live event ever streamed on Netflix. The comedy special marks Rock's first since getting slapped by Will Smith at the Oscars this year. It'll be premiering on March 4th. Thank you for those the effects. sound effects, David. The drama. Interesting. It was drama, wasn't it? I liked the it drama. Really was. Of drama. <laughs> All right, guys. 62 degrees for the high temperature today. Another freeze tomorrow morning at 30, but 60 for the high Tuesday. We'll gradually warm up. By Wednesday, we'll be near 70. An isolated shower is possible Thursday or Friday. And then by this weekend, highs are going to be in the mid-70s. We're going to forget all about this cold snap that we had. It's going to be like <laughs> nothing ever happened. Hey, tune in to KSAT.com for our KNN at 11 a.m. I'll be there with Sarah and at, back at noon. Hot dog. In the meantime,